Professor Dahoud Songodoi is still on the program with us. Is the Commissioner for Public Works and Transport in Oyo State. And tonight we're discussing Oyo Infrastructure Roadmap. Mm -hmm. Prof, thank you so much mm -hmm. for staying with us on politics tonight. Now let's talk about inner roads. Uh, I'm aware that um, as of last year, that's May last year, the government approved the award to, of contracts to reconstruct, repair, or improve a total of 99.53 kilometer inner roads in Ibado. As we speak, at what stage uh, are these projects? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, under our roadmap for sustainable development of all your state, 2023 to 2027, page 16 to 2 to page 18. We mentioned that we are going to deliver 65 kilometers of inner routes on the basis of 15 kilometers per year. That was what we wrote in that term, um, uh, roadmap. His Excellency actually take the bull by the horn, and started with 95.85 kilometers within Ibata City. Now, we had um, the roads in three lots. The first lot has um, 10 routes. The second has two routes. I'm going to mention the routes. And the third has um, um, five um, um, five routes. Now, the first road, the first lot, that that we have allotted is about seventy, about seventy kilometers. Right now, in lot one, we have started working on the one ten junction from that from the chat um, where you're going from Akpata or from from uh, Dube. We call it place one ten to challenge. Is it is a, a dual carriageway. And as I speak now, we have completed the total overlay of the 4.1 going and 4.1 kilometers, 8.2 kilometers. We were there with His Excellency on um, Thursday. The second road on that lot is the one around the um, Kopiowu NTC um, NUJ Nigeria Genesis Center, which we are working on the on the hard work right now. Now, again, we have another road from General Gas to Disengos. Disengos is a place along a whole a road, um, a whole, a whole road to um, a whole town itself. Now, they've completed a part of the um, wearing course. We're, we're at about um, close to about 1.2 kilometers has been completed in that route. So we are working on the drainage system along that area. So that makes number two route within that um, uh, um, um, lot one that we're working. So we believe that that part of um, the 1110 and that the Sengov will be completed within the next two weeks. So the other areas, other routes within lot one will, will be uh, will commence. And then since we have given them 12 months, and now by the end of this month, we will have spent just three months. So we still believe that one, we still have uh, time to complete the rest of the roads. Now, on that lot two, that one has um, the road from Agodigate, where, where we commissioned the junction improvement, to Malete. That's one part. And there's another place from Agugu and um, Okeadu to Akweni. Now, from that Malete, from that uh, end of Bere to Bode, that would have done the regulation as well as the overlay. So we are pushing that within the next two weeks, they should have completed the entire stretch of the overlay around that axis. Of course, they started working on the drainage, the line drains along the Okeadu, um, um, uh, Urita Kweni Road, um, via the uh, Goodwill High School. So that also we believe, and that is for six months. That's uh, lot two. So we are now again three months. With three months left, so it will be completed by God's grace by end of uh, June. Now for the lot three, that lot three has about um, um, 14 kilometers of road network. They have started working on 
the first part of the overlay between um, ITRR to former KBC, Babadu to um, the junction of um, Molite, okay, Bolaru. So that they've completed the overlay, the first overlay. So they are now working on the second section, which is from the um, that place, which is called Okiado um, Road, to Ansarudin, passed by the Nigerian Tribune area. As I speak now, they are working on the mm. on the um, line drain. So again, that section has um, eight months to complete the work. So it is my belief that all the three sections or the three lots be completed on time. Then we we'll move to other areas of the um, uh, state. All right. So when will that be? Because I, I was going to say that I'm sure you're aware that uh, there are people who accuse the governor of just uh, developing Ibadan. So when will the state government extend this repair, reconstruct to other inner roads and other parts of the state? Yeah, we have the we have the survey, we have the database of the linear routes uh, that are that, that are needed um, rehabilitation or reconstruction of, across the zones. But believe you me, if you want to do a good job, you must start somewhere, complete that one, and go to the next uh, um, um, phase. Yes. So if we complete that of Ibadan Zoom on or before the end of December 2024, certainly the 2025 project will accommodate some other zones. All right. So what kind of uh, support is the governor given to efforts made by local governments in line with the developmental plans of the states? The Gaga Road that I mentioned, linking the um, Okeoku and, uh, and um, Ibarapa, okay? The construction is by the local government, okay? So now also we have, within Ibadan City, we have this road, which is called um, Omiyajo, uh, Ido local government, 10.1 kilometer. It has been completed, it has been commissioned, it was, um, it was um, constructed by the local government. Also, we are working on the 5.5 um, kilometers within the barrack you mentioned earlier to um, um, comprehensive high school, and the comprehensive high school. That's about five point something a kilometer. Also, it's being constructed by the local government. So we are working together. There is synergy within the state and the local government for the development of our state. Right. Let's talk about transportation. How is uh, Governor Sheimaki Day enhancing transport infrastructure in your state? Yeah, remember, the road being constructed is to improve the transportation system in your state. Mm. For instance, we have our pace setter buses now operating across the zones. These days, we have problems in terms of um, inflation, in terms of the uh, removal of subsidy. His Excellency had been gracious to, to the people of your state and also give out, giving out our buses, okay, that commute from Ibadan to Gomasho, Ibadan. To Kyogo and so on, all right? So now that is to help to reduce the hardship of our people on the road. When the road is okay, and of course there's provision of buses on the road, there will be a very reduction, a good reduction in terms of maintenance of the vehicles itself. Mm. Now we also provided bus terminals. Bus terminals we con we constructed um, about um, two and a half years ago. We, that, that's one at um, Ojo, Ojo has been opened mm -hmm. as the commission and yes, Ojo, Ojo end of uh, Ibadan and challenge. Okay, we have we commissioned the two bus terminals the same day and it's being used by our transporters. If you get there now, you have a conducive um, environment to actually uh, do their businesses. See, so that is also part of his excellency engagement with contribution to development of transportation in all your, all your state. Uh, so when will the ones in Iwo Road and New Ife, when will they be ready? At what stage are they? Oh, thank you so much. The work, the work is actually uh, almost done. Um, we're expecting that before the end of August, but we see we have to put some aesthetics into it so that um, to be finalized and those one things of that and then the landscaping also will do that. So by the end of August, 
that should be completed again. That will also add value to the transmission system in a, on your state. Right, so I know you wanted to talk about this uh, earlier, so let's uh, dwell on this for a minute. Uh, how is the governor alleviating the current hardship faced by citizens in your state? Well, we, we've actually implemented very well the SAFER program, okay? So, and that is working for us. For instance, our farmers are benefiting uh, from what His Excellency has given out in terms of uh, um, what is needed on the farms, okay, fertilizers and so on. Even the small, medium uh, enterprises, they are equally given some loans to be able to push in the effect of, of that. So, there are a lot of, and like again, we mentioned this sort of transportation system now that um, we have buses all around the state. So, his Excellency is working on how to reduce the hardship of the people of, of, your, of your state. Now, don't, don't forget that the award he has given out to civil servants is also there. Then he has extended it again for another uh, three months. So, this is part of what the SAFER program is all about. The student also is being assisted in terms of um, uh, the, the, the transportation and even the loans. Okay. So, so I think. This so, this, this transportation, in, pardon me, Prof. Prof, this transportation, mm. is it free or subsidized? Right. No, it's reduced. It's subsidized. It's reduced. Okay. It's reduced. So, of course, for civil servant, once it's free, see, okay. for civil servant, it's free. So, for a, um, our aged people, it's also uh, free. So, so what you see, we can, because we have to maintain the vehicles also. So, therefore, it's all about how the effect is being, uh, the impact is, is, uh, is being, the, I'm sorry, the action is being reduced so that uh, it will not really uh, uh, get into, uh, the budget of our people uh, uh, negatively. So obviously, yes, some people are paying because we need also to maintain the vehicles on the road. All right. So two more issues on transportation. I want us to talk about Omidu two buses. Uh, I guess the government purchased seventy-five buses, and I know the original plan was one hundred and six long buses at zero fare efficiency. So should the border residents still expect more of these buses? Yeah, we are taking um, the, you see, we work with data, we work with logic, and we do scientific inference before we go up to say, let's do this. That's why it's working for its excellence. So what we have now is we are collecting if data facts to be able to know the next line to move. Okay, it could be we have um, 40 seater buses, depending on what the analysis is saying about commuters and their maintenance and so on. So, yes, they should expect good things to come. But of course, what we have started, we need to do the analysis to be able to convince ourselves that this is the route, route we have to go. All right, so the entire 76 buses are on the road as we speak. They are on, on, all over, all over uh, the state working for the people of your state. I'd also like to know, uh, is the state government considering developing an intra-city rail train system? Certainly, yes. Um, in 2022, um, it's excellently directed us uh, uh, through the uh, chief of staff to meet the Nigeria Railway Corporation to see, to synergize and see how we can work it out to revive the railway. When we were young in the 60s, we used to join the railway from Dubai down to Enomu. See, I will come, come back. So now we now we are working now with the Nigeria Railway Corporation. Besides, the Dawn Commission actually has, is actually coming out with um, another model that all the states with the Northwest will be linked by rail. His Excellency is having in mind the plans for us to link uh, other states in terms of railway, but to start with our in, inner uh, uh, intra rail connectivity from um, Ido. To Dubai, Dubai to Sango, Sango to Olodo, Olodo to Erum. That one will be able to assist our um, business and women to transport their goods and even services across uh, the state. So, uh, and of, and of course, we're equally working with the uh, Joint Commission to link 
of the state in terms of uh, uh, railway uh, connectivity. All right, Prof. Uh, the first international tourism summit is coming up in your state. Uh, what is the state aiming to achieve and what should citizens also expect from this summit? The first thing is our roadmap for sustainable development. We are concentrating more on the key, three, key, uh, key, uh, sorry, key priority areas, <coughs> security, education, health, expand, uh, expansion of uh, economy. And under expansion of economy, it's actually, actually added some other things, which is the tourism. So which means if we get it very right, this summit, of course, we bring in uh, um, investors to our state. Because when you do sightseeing, of course, you'll be able to think right to say, I can invest in the uh, in this area in all your state. So, when, of course, yes, you will come for leisure. You can come to enjoy yourselves, you can have holidays. But when you do that also, you take something home in terms of what you need to invest. So, I believe, by God's grace, that this summit will have more value to our expansion of our economy. Also, we sell our culture to other parts of uh, the world. That's, that's fundamental. Because we have very rich culture. So that also will enable us to send the, our culture to other parts um, uh, of, uh, uh, of the world. So, and of course, our people will benefit. Because when you have such, such a summit across the globe, people are coming, of course, you know that it also adds add to the economy of the state in terms of IGR. Because uh, once we have things like that, the focus also will mean that. We have some activities, economic activities that surround it. And of course, it means that um, the idea will also improve. But the ultimate goal is to sustain the tourism um, sector so that we we'll be able to sell our culture, we'll be able to expand our economy through uh, that um, sector. All right, Prof. It's been an interesting conversation with you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us on Politics Tonight. I've been speaking with Professor Dahoud Shongo Doi is the Commissioner for Public Works and Transport in your state. Thank you so much uh, for joining us as we discuss uh, your infrastructure roadmap. Thank you for joining us, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.